Hello, uh, this uh, video is the first in a series of videos where the ultimate goal at the end of this video is to make a Twitter bot that posts images to Twitter. Now, why you might do this? What, what's the point of making a Twitter bot? What are Twitter bots? It's kind of a, a, a big topic and uh, I think we'll sort of like get to that discussion along the way. I'll put some links in this video's description of uh, some articles and some examples that you might look at to think about making Twitter bots, but I'm really gonna stick to the nuts and bolts, the technical stuff. Uh, in this series of videos. So, and the first thing that I want to start with is something called node, node.js, and working with the command line. So, let's say you're someone who's been here with me watching videos about programming in JavaScript. Um, let's come over to the whiteboard here and think about what's going on. You are a person who is working on a laptop, and in that laptop, you, you have a browser, and you have been making JavaScript sketches, you might have written an HTML page, a CSS page, and you have these nice little animations running in that browser, uh, written in, and uh, I have a whole set of tutorials that you could look at using this JavaScript framework called P5.js. Okay, so what's going on there? If, for example, you are using the P5.js editor, what the P5.js editor is doing is running something called a server. What is a server? So, you know, we think of this thing, we use this terminology known as the cloud. Uh, this is a thing that's come up a lot at ITP here recently, which is that the cloud is really like a lot of underground bunkers and <laughs> giant, scary looking facilities. There's, they're not really like these servers floating in the sky that, you know, on, on the wings of unicorns or something that you might like to think or that this idea of the cloud might make you think, but I'm kind of off topic here. The point is, if, let's just think about Google for a second. Google has a server, and when you type into your browser, google.com, you're making a request to that server, and that server gives you a response. All of that has, in fact, been happening if you're writing JavaScript code, making web pages, on your laptop. Your laptop using the P5.js editor is running a little server to simulate what might happen should you ever deploy or upload your stuff somewhere else. And so if you have your own website, like my website is Schiffman, it's, it really needs to be redesigned and fixed up. Maybe you can help me with that. So I, I hesitate to mention it, but uh, Schiffman.net, for example, right? If I worked on something, I took my code and I put it here, then now, uh, somebody else in the internet could make a request to my server and where I put all of my JavaScript code and it might respond and send that JavaScript code so that that person could see the beautiful animation happening in their web browser. So all of these, with the exception of Google, because their server is obviously like a highly sophisticated thing with a lot going on, but in this case with P5.js running it locally or uploading the thing you made with P5.js to uh, your own web server, the only thing that's happening that for on the web server, that the web server is doing, is delivering static content. It's delivering an HTML file. It's delivering a JavaScript file. It's delivering some images. It's delivering some styles, some CSS. What I, am what I would like to talk about in this video is what, what happens when, it, when, when there comes a time in your life where that's not enough. You need to actually run a program on the server. Now, Google clearly does this because when you ask for, you know, search for uh, rainbows, you want to find out about, on Google about rainbows, a little server program runs and it like connects to their massive like crazy database of the entire like universe of thought and, and information <laughs> and it processes it and figures out and it figures out what to give back to you. That's a little server program that's running on Google servers. You know, if you log into your online banking and put in your username and password, a little server program has to read that, figure out if it's the right username and password, and give you back your account balance, that sort of thing. So Node is a framework, a JavaScript framework for writing custom, I would say, servers. Now, the thing is, even though, so, so there's a lot that you could do here uh, and I, and I, I won't, uh, in terms of like writing your own web server. But one of the reason why I'm doing these videos about Node is 
One of the things that you might want to do in your life making projects with code and information and things is make use of the Twitter API. So I have a whole set of videos all about various APIs you could connect to. Word, Nick, New York Times, Giphy, all these are APIs that I've sh uh, that in previous videos I've shown you how to connect to from P5.js itself. But Twitter is a special sort of API that requires something called OAuth. I think of that as like, oh my god, I have to authenticate. That's when I see OAuth, I think, oh, auth. Because it's like a pain and I don't know, I need this extra thing and I can't do it in the client side and then I gotta need a secret and a key and a token and start to feel very stressed out. I wanna lie down, I need a cold compress on my head, all of this stuff. It's, uh, I'm feeling like flushed already just thinking about it. But Ultimately, an answer to dealing with OAuth is writing your own node application. You, you must authenticate with your account information. You cannot do that from just the browser directly. The, a server can do that, however, for you. So if you wanted to connect to Twitter from, <laughs> if that camera shut off, if you want to connect to Twitter from, lost my train of thought, if you want to connect to Twitter from P5.js, what you need is a server program that's serving up your P5.js code and also talking to Twitter for you, and there's some sort of communication thing that's going on there. So this is what, I'm gonna to get to all of this eventually. There's a lot of steps involved, but I'm trying to give you the background of what you might need Node for. Other things you might need a server for. You wanna save stuff to a database on a server. You know, if you want to like process a massive amount of data and uh, pass that back to your P5.js sketch, you might wanna write your own server. Uh, if you want to build your own API, an example that I was thinking about the other day is if you wanted to make an a exposed like information about yourself through an API, and you know you put all these sensors on your body all day that are like tracking all sorts of things, then on your own server you could expose that. You could write a server that spits out all that information via JSON. Other people could query it. So there's lots of things that creative things you could do with the server, and I feel like this is the new playlist: creative servers. This is uh, and, and working with Node, but in this section, the reason why you need Node is the Twitter API. So that was a lot of background there and sort of like thinking about this picture. Um, let's come back over here to where I am invisible because this camera uh, shut off by accident. Um, and now what I would like to do is start looking at how you actually use Node um, locally on your own laptop. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is download and install Node. And I guess I've already done that, but I'm going to uh, just sort of Google Node, and I'm going to grab the Node website. You can see it's nodejs.org. Uh, it's the website is detecting that I'm on OS X, so it's offering me the OS X download. But of course, if you're on Windows, just about everything I'm showing you here will be the same. But please, if you're lost or confused, ask in the comments, and maybe I could ultimately make like a uh, uh, a video that just sort of covers looking at Node on a Windows machine, if that would be helpful to some of you. So once you've downloaded and installed Node. Another question opens up like, well, what do you do? How do you run Node? How do you even make anything with Node? So this involves using your computer's command line. <laughs> so on a Mac, uh, there is something called terminal. And I have it sort of already here. I'm, like, I'm, I'm inside the terminal. I can't, I can't see where I am. I think I'm, am, I, am, I, am I touching the terminal? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, this over here. <laughs> This is the, t the terminal. <laughs> you guys don't need this like weird physical thing that I'm doing. Um, and uh, if I run it, you can see, ooh, I don't need it that big. Everything's going crazy. Uh, the font size is like giant. Um, um, uh, you can see here is now, this is like a little window into the computer, into the computer's soul in a way. So you need to find terminal, you know, search for it in your applications, utilities, run terminal. Suddenly this is a place where you can start issuing commands for the computer to follow. For example, a command that you might want to know about is PWD. PWD stands for print working directory. And you can see that's where I am. I'm in the user slash processing folder. So you can browse your computer's folder and directory structure from this terminal window. This is, you know, this, uh, a lot of this is all, you know, these are essentially Unix commands. Right? <laughs> and so ultimately, you're learning about how you might operate a computer that doesn't have a GUI interface, and this is how 
lots of computers use to work only. And uh, anyway, I'm, I'm a little off track here. So uh, another command that might be really useful is cd for change directory. So I happen to know that I want to change into the documents folder. So I'm going to do that. And now I can say pwd to c. Yes, I'm in users processing documents. And then another thing you could do, at least on a Mac, which is really nice, is I could take cd and then I could say, well, where's the folder I really want to be? Well, I really want to be in um, uh, desktop YouTube code, which is where I'm going to put the code for this video. I can actually just drag that folder into the terminal itself, and it sort of auto-populated the path for that folder. I can hit enter, and then you can see I'm in that directory. So why does any of this matter? The reason why this matters is, unlike other things that you might have done before, like processing or P5, where you're writing code in a kind of GUI interface, hitting a run button, seeing a result, everything that you do through Node is all going to happen through this terminal view. So for example, what, this only will work if you've installed Node, but one of the first things you can do with Node is just type Node. Now notice the icon changed from a dollar sign to a greater than symbol. So now that you have this greater than symbol, it means, oh, I'm in like JavaScript land. I could just start typing JavaScript code. Like I could say var uh, uh, x equals 100, var y equals x times 2. And then I could say, oh, let me type x. And look, it's the value 100. Let me type y. It's the value 200. So one of the things you can do with Node is just start playing around with experimenting with JavaScript. It's kind of like a real-time console. where you, it's, This is very similar to the browser console, if you've ever used that to sort of debug and figure out what's going in the browser. So first of all, Node just lets you run arbitrary JavaScript through the command line. Now, I wanna, if I want to get out of this, I need to type control c control c the other thing Node lets you do is run small JavaScript programs through the command line. So for example, I'm going to use this editor Sublime, and I'm going, to make a, I'm going to save this file, and I'm going to go to that folder, YouTube code, and I'm going to name it as like uh, Node1. I'm going to make a folder, and then I'm going to say uh, hello.js. So I've now saved a file in that directory called hello.js. Here, by the way, uh, is another command that you might find useful, ls. You can see, oh, list, I have a directory called node1. Let's change into that directory, another, and I type ls again, and I can see hello.js is there. Now, what if I were to put into this program console.log, hello, YouTube. I don't know, I might upload this to Vimeo. <laughs> hello, arbitrary video website. <laughs> so I wrote some code in this file. How do I execute that code? Node. I want to run something with node. Hello.js. And you can see hello, and I spelled arbitra arbitrary. I spelled it wrong, but you can see that that code has run and it's come out. So little processes, little scripts, little things that I might want to make happen on my computer that just I can program them in JavaScript and run them through the command line. Number one, that's what node is for. Now, if, I, if this were the part of the videos that I intend to ultimately make where all I'm doing is looking at um, web servers, uh, then uh, ultimately I might show you then now how to open a listening port, how to accept connections to that port, how to send things back to the browsers that are connected to that port, all of those things. But instead of that, what I want to do is take another direction, which is just look at how can I, from here, from the command line, connect and authenticate to the Twitter API and get information from search Twitter, look for people who have replied to me on Twitter, uh, and then also post tweets uh, uh, myself back to Twitter. How can I do all of that just right here from the command line without ever opening up a browser, without ever touching uh, any other Twitter app? Because if I can do that, then I can make a program that will run and say every five minutes or 50 minutes or one hour, post a tweet automatically based on some other type of algorithmic uh, set of rules that I might want to make. So I think this wraps up this first video. If you're watching it, you download Node, get it installed, figure out how to get to the command line of your computer, figure out that you can type Node, that you can enter some JavaScript, that you can run a short little JavaScript program that just spits something back out to the console. And in the next video, what I'm going to look at is how to like use something called NPM, Node Package Manager, to spin up a uh, sort of a, a larger Node project and use a Twitter package to connect to the Twitter API. 
Okay, so thanks for watching and uh, see, you, <laughs> see you in the next video. That was me making like a rainbow symbol. <laughs> you know how like people have like a sign out thing? That's never gonna work for me, I know, sorry. <laughs> I'm embarrassed for myself too, okay. Uh,